In Revelation book 3, verses 14 to 22, we find the letter to the church of Laodicea. Let us read. And to the angel of the church, the Laodiceans write, These things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne, who has an ear. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The passage we just read is worth reading in its entirety because of the sternness of the warning it gives. It is a really strong rebuke and one that all Christians should pay attention to. If we do not introspect in the light of this passage, we may find ourselves falling into the trap of the Christians in Laodicea. This is especially true in the current context where so much heresy is being propagated on the airwaves. Prophets, television evangelists, pastors, and preachers all over the world have been using the presence of wealth as a signal of God's Spirit with us. The Christians in Laodicea were rich. Their testimony was, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. If the modern day prophets are correct, these men and women should be faultless. They would have been the epitome of the often misrepresented scripture, God wishes above everything that you would prosper and be in health even as your spirit prospers. These rich and wealthy Christians were living in God's rejection, and the worst thing is that they didn't even know. They were found to be lukewarm. Have you been hearing about this and wondered? What is a lukewarm Christian? The character of such an individual is outlined in the passage. It is a Christian who says, I do not need a thing. But God looks at them and says, You do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. We must examine ourselves to make sure we do not fall into this category. To be in a state of wretchedness as a child of God is very dangerous. This means that we are full of calluses. A lukewarm Christian is one that has become insensitive to the moving of the Holy Spirit and will wander so far away that they become unfit for service. That is, as Jesus says, a pitiful state to be in. We must ensure that we avert this danger by paying attention to who we are. God will eventually spit us out of his mouth because we have lost value. The fact is that the lukewarm individual is not willing to accept the remedies that God has outlined for them. Jesus says to the church in Laodicea, come and buy gold that has been refined in the fire so that you can be rich. A lukewarm Christian's response to that would be, I do not need a thing that individual would then be left to their poverty-stricken state. Not as far as material wealth goes, but in terms of being rich in the sight of God. That is having the security of the inheritance that Jesus Christ has procured for us. 
Jesus offers white clothes for those who are naked. He calls all of us to purchase white clothes from him so that we can cover our shameful nakedness. Those who accept this invitation to buy, not with money, but with obedience and surrender, will be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. But the lukewarm Christian will retort, I do not need a thing. They either do not mind being naked and exposed to the devil's schemes and the storms of demonic attacks that come against them, or they are insensitive to the conditions that they are in and they really do not know that they are naked and exposed. Such an individual will not receive the help that Jesus is offering. Come, says Jesus, and purchase from me salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. Salve is an ointment used for healing or protection of the skin in ailing areas. In this case, Jesus wants to do what he has done for so many. He wants to restore sight to the blind. After all, this is the prerogative of his mission and anointing. Those of us who have received our spiritual vision from Jesus did so because we yielded to the Holy Spirit and he restored our sight. We will sing with the songwriter, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. The lukewarm Christian will rebut this invitation to sight by saying, Lord, I do not have need for a thing. God cannot trust a lukewarm Christian with anything meaningful in the kingdom of God. Paul cautions, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. 1 Corinthians book 10, verse 12. Solomon warns in Proverbs book 14, verse 12. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The lukewarm Christian is in danger of both falling and then dying because of the perpetual ignorance that he or she chooses to live in. One of the things that we must note about Jesus' nearness to the spewing of lukewarm Christian from his mouth is the fact that such a person is of no use in advancing the mission and message of Jesus. Which of us who live in a cold country do not welcome a hot beverage after reaching out in a blistering cold? And who among us, after spending a day in the sweltering heat, would reject a cold drink. But on what occasion would we reach for a lukewarm beverage? I really can't think of one. And the Lord is saying the same thing. He has no use for a lukewarm Christian. The devil doesn't pay attention to that person either. Because such a person is not walking in and towards the victory that Jesus has secured for them. No harm is being done to the lukewarm Christian who has been lulled to sleep. <laughs> Listen, friends, if we have found ourselves in this state, we must ensure that we repent. Jesus is offering real and true wealth that is hidden from rust and dust and is stored up in heaven, as he says. He is offering his holiness that will veil us and keep us safe when eternity rolls in and Jesus is ready to receive us into his new Jerusalem. He is offering the repentant heart his sight. He wants us to see the world how he sees it. When we can repent, we can wreak havoc on the kingdom of darkness and walk in victory. Leave any lukewarm state that you are in. Revelation book three, verses 21 to 22. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my Father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 3.15 I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot, I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Idris translation of this verse is simple. 
Don't be a lukewarm Christian. You have to make a decision. The Bible does not allow us to sit on the fence. No wonder why the Lord Jesus says in Matthew 5 verse 37. Let your yes be a yes or your no be a no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. But my favorite translation of this verse is from the Passion Translation. It states a simple yes or no will suffice. Anything beyond this springs from a deceiver. Wow, the Bible is so blunt. There is no such thing as spiritual neutrality. 